So, hello everyone. Welcome back for another uh, creative session live stream here at uh, Stitch Media as we work on Terrarium. Uh, this is Jeff speaking. I'm the art director here. Uh, I, this week I'll be continuing on doing some uh, character designs. Uh, what I have for you this time around, I prepared, uh, as you see on the screen, uh, a simple outline. Uh, this is going to be possibly one of the bosses that appear in the game. And so I've kind of prepared a first, uh, three kind of ideas for of it. And so what I'm going to be doing uh, for the next hour or so is uh, fleshing out a couple of them, deciding on which one I think I will kind of elaborate on. Uh, then I'm going to do some quick coloring and then probably, hopefully by the time the hour is up, it will kind of look semi-okay. <laughs> so uh, just to show you what I got, uh, I kind of show these these layers. So I start start off with something very simple, it's just the shape of the body. For, for this one I just wanted to like um, come up with a simple pose that I can uh, elaborate upon. Uh, I just wanted something to set me in space. Um, and here the idea is the Mugu have kind of come upon this boss and they're kind of freaked out and the boss is just kind of uh, inquiring about them, looking at them. So that's a very simple outline of what I'm starting with and just show you some of the backgrounds maybe to give myself an idea of how it sits in space but I don't actually think I need them right now while I draw. Um, so I'm gonna keep it off and this is the first idea. Here we have again I guess all these three ideas I'm working with today they're just kind of a mix between um, plants and and uh, trees, tree type creatures. So this one the idea started with just like I was just drawing the, the, the furled brow of uh, the first one and I decided to draw a what turned out to be just kind of a very simple uh, leafy mustache. And then from there I moved upon to like what other kind of uh, vegetables, plants, you know, can I can I add to this creature? So I decided research researched cabbages, um, looking at the overlapping of uh, the leaves there. So I added that to the head, kind of liked where it was going. Um, turn the body into a very squat, rounded back, aged look. I thought that matched well uh, the pose with the face. Um, so that was very rough. Uh, but here if I turn off the actually the base, you could, it's a little cleaned up. And you see I started to incorporate just some of the textures of the wood here in his uh, calf and his upper, his lower arm. Uh, so that's how, that's how this one turned out. Um, the next one I was playing with Again, same pose, but uh, different result. Approach this one with thinking, okay, how about I make the head more of like it's just wearing a mask. Uh, still keep with the ideas of blending wood and uh, and leaves and uh, branches. Um, this one, much less uh, stocky, uh, a bit more angular. Um, again, I was just randomly have images open in the background of different tabs uh, as I was drawing these and one image was just like I think it was just like uh, an antlered animal I was like oh what would an ant a set of antlers but made of uh, leaves, leaves look like so I kind of started going down that route and then the last one I was doing just uh, not too long ago was uh, this one again once more just same pose a bit more fish-like, uh, pig-nosed uh, animal, um, big bulky arms and torso. I actually don't like the legs here so I might actually just completely erase it. Uh, difference here is that I started adding upon uh, some actual clothing, you know, material. So instead of just limiting myself just to wood and, and any kind of vegetation, adding actually some kinds of of uh, clothing material, cloths, just changed it from just something that lives out in the woods to something that has a bit more of a uh, 
let's say personality or culture like it's wearing clothing and that just kind of changes the, the dyna dynamic of of what this creature is it's like okay it has a bit more personality it has a bit of more history there so that's something that i actually might just flesh out for the next 10 minutes and then once that's up i'm gonna see which one of these three that i'm a little more comfortable with and then i'll i'll uh work on tightening up the drawing and then maybe for the last half hour i'll just do some coloring um so yeah oh if you're wondering what's in my ears right now i just have some earbuds i'm listening to music that y'all can't hear but uh definitely sets me in the mood <laughs> while i draw um so oh, this is actually done. so uh yeah i'm just gonna work on this a little bit i'll be sure to to keep my head up just to see any new comments that come in uh but for now just uh follow along as i work on this uh this latest creature So here's one of the ideas is this set of wing like things on his back um, but they're not really wings they're a set of leaves what should that look like uh, you know what I want this to be curved Rather than looks like there's a set of bones that's giving it an underlying structure. I want it to be more like it's just falling into place. So again, right now I just want to keep everything very loose. Um, I will be drawing this one uh, a second time if I feel like it's worth pursuing so and So as I said, I didn't like the legs, I didn't like the uh, big longish set of legs the sky had. So I'm gonna go ahead and erase these and I'll bring up the base part again to see what the original shape for the other two was versus now. And since I want to keep a bit of clothing on this character. Uh, right now I'm just thinking of if I actually draw another layer underneath it, how do I want to situate the body? So let me go up here, tone it down for a second so I could give myself uh, some, some skeletal structure of how it's standing now. Um, what position is a good one for this? Hunt over. So 
So this is actually where some of the old figure drawing classes, hours and hours I've done before actually finally come into play and help quite a bit when drawing creatures is always remembering to draw from the inside out draw from the the skeleton and knowing how that impacts the surface of a body uh, so right now it's not a human but I just want to get Corvette. There is the pelvis, which we don't want to help. Big don't want these legs to actually be. Well, that's how big the arms are. So I think I'll still maintain. same type of pose I had with the others uh, but just smaller legs than I had initially drawn always like that that mix of something not being quite proportional as you might expect so very tiny legs with a giant upper body might be okay how does that look bring that back up well, that just looks a little ridiculous. <laughs> so, maybe it's a little too small. Let's go back and edit that. Or, simpler, I can freehand this. Say, I do like the shape of that, those legs, but I just want to change the scale. There we are. I think that. Fits. Now I'm not quite happy with the legs themselves. Maybe I do want them a little more, be a little more root-like, to match a little more the the thickness of the upper body. So what I'm actually going to do is again probably just change the lower parts of the legs, make a little more stocky. Here we go. Big, thick legs. Bring the top layer back up. A little hard to see, but I think I'm happier with that. So, now just to clean this part up, I'm going to bring the layer I just drew is visibly back down so now I could just draw on the original layer <clears throat> but just use the lower layer as a guide for that I just want to remove what I originally kind of stuck there for some draping draping cloths don't like the shape Clunkini, the quad, and rather large feet. <clears throat> so, just to maintain some of the tree aspect of these creatures. Uh, giving this one some root-like feet, toes that spread out. Clean up, which is his hand. Um, again, another little thing I like doing is giving some of these big creatures little itty bitty hands it's draping cloth uh, I know 
Is this other thigh? It's a big knee. Right into set of big roots. So let me delete the bottom layer. I don't need that anymore. So I think this is enough of an idea to decide if I want to which of the three I want to proceed with. Uh, there's this guy, this one, and the original old fellow. Um, you know what? I think I do like all three of them. I mean, I don't, at this point, I don't feel like any of them are any less than the others. Um, Maybe I will go with this old guy, the first one I did. Now I did start to do like some flat uh, flat color work on him. Uh, just a block out if I really want to, to proceed and color this guy. Um, that will change if once I do uh, tighten up the line work. Uh, but I'll give this guy a shot. So what I'm going to do, create a new layer, bring this set of line work down, pick uh, going from more like a charcoal sketching type pen uh, brush to an inking one. I like the very technical precise uh, pen. Let's see how's the thickness on this. So what I'm doing here is making sure that I have the right brush dynamics that I want. It's that it uh, goes uh, like it's smooth as I want it to be, but not too smooth. So I get some um, some naturalness uh, to just the uh, uh, the edges, and then if I want the thick parts to be as thick as I want them to be. Um, and again, for the lightest areas to be as light and thin as I need them to be. So right now I think that looks okay. And I'll start kind of just uh, redefining this this guy. Maybe just spend, let's see how much time I got. Yeah, I got about 40 minutes. So maybe I'll spend 15 minutes just uh, re-outlining this guy. See here, since his forehead was conceptualized being more like the trunk of a tree, or at least the same kind of texture, I want it to be a bit more craggly, but also a lot more, uh, has a bit more angular surfaces than the leaves that are surrounding his head. Um, and I guess giving a creature, a receding hairline, often does really kind of uh, age it. Uh, maybe turn down the brush thickness a bit. It's getting a little too clumpy there. Um, So my natural illustration art style, um, I got into art, uh, one of the reasons because of comics, so I've always kind of had that, that kind of, um, that kind of progression where I always start with outlines. I know a lot of uh, other artists out there have, that came from different ways, so you know, and they're able to just start painting on a set of outlines where it's not the f the line work doesn't define the art. On the opposite, where I'm always kind of 
within that that uh, that comic book type method of working with outlines that and the outlines define the character. Um, just haven't been able to break away from that, and I'm okay with going uh, sticking with that type of method. So what I'm doing here is just building up his furrowed forehead while still kind of trying to make it resemble what the trunk of a tree might look like if it uh, had a face in it that was, wasn't was looking at you too, too pleasantly. Thing you don't I kind of lost by removing that that guide layer is looking at the movie see these little creatures down here whistling walk away running let's give this guy some bags underneath his eyes And then that leafy mustache of his was a look like. Normally, as a person that can't grow a nice thick mustache, I'd at this point normally go online and just Google Olympic record mustaches right now and see what they properly look like. But I think I could uh, get an idea of what it might look like without researching it.
Swamp Thing with Grandpa. Absolutely, actually, yeah, Swamp Thing does have that kind of upper lip, kind of triangular kind of growth coming down. Here's the part where his head starts being engulfed by the, the, the leaves. So, I don't want his jaw. I still want his jaw to be tree like. So, it cracks there. One of the fun things about, about drawing wood is you're able to get all these little bit of uh, textures in there. Uh, like, let's see if I go here, just that spiral-esque part of the wood you see. Throw that in. So I'm not going to go too overboard and detail the hell out of this guy, so I'm going to move on to the leaves now. Uh, brush, thickness up. So again, this would be a part where I would normally kind of pull up some reference material images online so I could see just how it does cabbage leaves fold upon one another to make this really uh, work. Uh, I'm just gonna do without that for now and just kind of hope it looks close enough. Here, I'm starting to drift away from the line work underneath it. Um, as I get a better sense of what I want it to be and how the structure of his head changed a little bit, I also want to not be. Uh, beholden to what I drew the first time around. So, here we go. Oh, one thing I do like about cabbage leaves <coughs> is the edges. So I want to give a little bit more, uh, make it look like maybe it's a bit more worn of the edge, edges of the leaves. So add some curves there. A 
How's that turning out? Gotta get in those veins. Gotta, gotta make sure that forehead has a bit of detail. Also kind of contrasting the, the the line work itself has contrast between the the fibers, the 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 structure of a wood material. How does how do the edges of that appear versus the softer uh, vein like look of the leaves themselves. So just being a little more uh, loose and offering a bit more curves when drawing the veins just when you can zoom out a little bit you actually do see how much uh, of a contrast there might be uh, between the two I might go back well if this sketch turns out okay and I do do this work on this character even more, uh, I definitely will go back in and research cabbage leaves. See how they're actually, what they actually look like. So I'm at that point where it's the head and the torso meeting. So I'm just wondering how I should let that play out. Do put a couple more leaves. Big one. One thing you might notice just by looking right now is that with the amount of lines on there, it does kind of, you do kind of get lost in the lines themselves. Some of that will be cleared up once color is added. Uh, but before I get to that point, I'm actually going to actually be coloring the lines uh, different sets of colors, um, possibly even uh, making the line work that right now defines the leaves a lighter color than those that are on his forehead uh, that's going to be just because of like where do I want emphasis where do I want uh, the eye to be drawn to and I want it m drawn more to his face rather than to the leaves behind his head uh, so that's one thing just to remember uh, as you're looking at this where it's just like a whole bunch of lines right now uh, that there is a plan in mind how to kind of uh, work with an illustration uh, in, in a matter that you don't kind of lose uh, what you want your audience to see. Um, so right now I'm fully aware that there's a lot of a lot more line lines uh, in this part of the figure right now, uh, but that'll be dealt with once I get to the coloring stage.
reverse cash match game. Yeah, 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 yeah. It is. I mean, uh, I didn't think of that when I first started drawing this. Uh, I'm just trying to think back. Did they ever create an old character, an older Cabbage Patch kid <laughs> uh, figure? So I think I got the neck frills all done. Time for the body. Gonna be a nice thick wood torso. tree guy has a bit of a pot belly putting it there uh, and actually what I drew in here was moss again playing mixing the vegetation ideas there's a bit of Moss on the, his upper thighs. On a scale of 1 to 10, how delicious is this boss when steamed? I don't know, it's pretty old. Pretty old. Wouldn't be delicious. Would not take a bite out of this guy. Steamed hams. You could be the first to try. Let's see. This thighs. Oh. That's right. I wanted this to be more mossy. So, so here, putting a little clumpy details that are supposed to be moss. Yeah, that's the shape of a butt. Calf. And same like the last one, big, big stumpy toes, they're a bit more root-like. How's that looking? So originally I had his arm down on the ground, which meant his torso was a little bit twisted. Not sure if I could make that work here. So, uh, give him a short arm. And 
Oh, where does it land? It's okay for now. Very rough. Yeah, that's Moss on his knees. Um, he's an old guy. I mean, I guess he's. I could have used Moss elsewhere on his body. I should probably put some on his belly too. Why not? Here we go. Just a patch over here. Uh, and I guess old guys have some chest here too, so I'll add some moss over there too. Moss eyebrows. Mm, no. <laughs> uh, but it will add on his twig on his back. Too thick. There we go. So, now that I got most of the outline done, and I got, no way, I only got 11 minutes, I'm not going to get to coloring at all. <laughs> I should have stopped drawing this probably about like uh, 10 minutes ago. Uh, well, then I guess I'm going to quickly just add a bit more detail, then just get the flats down, and maybe next week I will continue with this guy, and you can see him colored in. Pick a thinner line and I start drawing in those wood like details. Does he have a name? No, but uh, um, more than open to any kind of suggestion for this guy. What does he look like? All right now.
So I'm getting close to the end of the line work on this guy. I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think of what a naked old guy looks like at the moment. I'm not sure how often I thought of that. Uh, ribs. <laughs> Visible are the ribs. What does a tree's set of old ribs look like? Uh, I think it might look something like that, have that texture. button on this guy? Should I do a belly button? <laughs> Why not? Uh, I'm assuming if we could see this guy's back he'd probably have some moss on the back too. How's that looking? Um, so in the next phase, I really only got like five minutes left, so I'm going to do this super quick. Uh, it is. just do some flat color work set it up for next week uh, this is a nice place to leave off so kind of set this up actually is it in gray? Yeah. Kind of one of the ants, one of the ants, exactly. And that's the thing when I guess we're coming up with characters is unintentionally hitting upon something that's also quite similar. So yeah, this could be very empty and there's nothing wrong with that. Um, I think if we were to have wanted to avoid something like that with Terrarium and not make people think of another uh, um, prior character out there um, maybe it would be better to actually go with one of the other ideas uh, something like this would it does that come across as uh, another creature um, I like the old guy I mean I'm not even sure if I really like this one the one with uh, the wings I mean I'm sure there's other creatures out there that and characters that look very similar I do like Mr. Ent old guy uh, quite a bit Van Dyke Brown. All right, <laughs> I'll put in Van Dyke Brown. How do I kind of do that with palettes? All right, here for Mister Seven up here. Five, eight, four, six, 
the reserve. Van Dyke Brown. That is not a nice color. Actually, it is. Uh, it's okay. It's okay. So even the blocking, the color blocking phase, um, some people use it differently. Um, generally it's used for uh, putting in flats so that you can easily just select a layer and just certain portions of it um, without having to, uh, to go in and just paint uh, without any boundaries. Uh, I like keeping my art nice and clean, so that's how I usually use flats. Uh, it's a slow process, it's very... Precise, at least the way I use it, it's very precise. Almost there. This is the leafy mustache. I wish I could grow, grow a mustache this uh, thick. and we'll call it a day. guys for sticking around while I work on this guy. Uh, I actually do like the way he turned out. Uh, maybe he makes it into the game, maybe he doesn't. Um, not sure at this point. Not sure what his name is. I don't know what he would be called. Oh, one of the last bit. 
find out the mass. And the last little bit is this little bit growing out of his back. And here we go. Uh, that's what I got done in an hour. Um, really thought I'd have more time, but time does fly. Uh, so maybe I'm just gonna leave it here and next week I'll pick it up um, at this stage and you can probably see what how the coloring process goes I think that's a good way to leave it so uh, thanks for joining me uh, Jeff here at Stitch Media uh, working on terrarium uh, thanks and I'll see you guys next week bye I'm on next Friday, usually Fridays, my schedule Fridays at 3. Um, so you can find me back here in the seat doing this guy again. Thanks again. Keep your calendars clear. Yeah. Okay. I click stop streaming, but stop recording. Yeah, both of them.